kitchen that has a milk, coffee, and tea inside? Oh yeah, this is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. At Parkview Animal Hospital in Lincoln, it's not just a professional care that sets them apart, but their warm staff and state-of-the-art facilities. Whether it's for a routine checkup or a comprehensive medical procedure, at Parkview, your pet isn't just another number, but a valued member of their caring family. Visit them at pahlincoln.com today and in person just south of 14th and Pine Lake Road. Parkview Animal Hospital, your pet, our passion. For happier, healthier furry friends. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes and family-friendly facilities. Trading paint. We got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts, beer, and barbecue. Oh, it'll for sure be a good time. And you are all invited. NASCAR weekend at Kansas Speedway, May 4th and 5th. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today. We'll see a chance of showers this morning and partly sunny skies this afternoon. It will be breezy too with the high around 58. Tonight we'll see increasing clouds and a low around 35. And tomorrow mainly cloudy skies expected with an afternoon high around 59. I'm meteorologist Kyle Fucker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Why wait until Friday to start your weekend? Go ahead, start right now. You're thirsty now, and 93.7 The Ticket is here to help you stock up. Just in time for the weekend when I like to hit the clubs. Time to broaden your horizons and try some new wine and beer. It's Thirsty Thursday with Kevin Meyer from Meyer's Cork and Bottle. Oh, there it is! There it is! You know... Jay's gonna stick around. Hit it one more time. Oh, so fizzy. You know I, I like never, it. I ain't <laughs> never seen nobody this hype in my life. Boy, man. you see, I get to tap in that leg. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The but the leg in your Jerry eye, Gray? though. Not hey, even Kevin, Jerry Gray? Do you ever see anybody come in your store and look like this? Look at that. Look at it. I tell you. Uh, Besides the, Strick. The best thing I love about doing the show with Strick is the enthusiasm. <laughs> and I uh, I had a customer, Thursday, in, Thursday. customer in the other day, and uh, he said... Uh, not even Jerry Gray? He, say that again? Anyway, so he puts his beer up on the counter, and I said, anything else I can get for you? He's like, oh, man, no, I'm just kind of in a rut with this beer. I said, you're not in a rut, man. You're in a groove. And he said, you know, I like that. Ooh, that's a good word, yeah, Jay. Yeah, and uh, so he... It's two of the same thing, but one's... Depends on how you how look, you at, look it. at it. Right, right. So yeah. your perspective changes. So he came in about a week later, and he said, you know, you changed my life. And I said, well, how did I change your life? <laughs> And he said, you said it, was a, it wasn't a rut, it was a groove. And I decided, you know, hey, uh, it, it all depends on how you look at things. So there's no, no use changing tonight. if it ain't broken. Mm. And then he came in again. And he said, you know, I always love coming in here because you've got cold beer and a positive attitude. And I said, you know what? You can go a long way in life with a cold beer and positive attitude. Yo, Kevin, there's, so, a, song, there's a song that says, let's groove tonight. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That was Share from our spice of life. So that's the big, basically you planted that seed in his mind of let's groove tonight. That's right. That's right. So you're stuck in a rut. That's better than that. You're you want to try the beer too there? Losing, stuck in a rut. It's koala tears. This is called yeah, koala tears. Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. Let me get, I got to get you. Yeah, Hang on. Groove tonight. And then you're stuck in no, a rut. You're lost and stuck in a rut. <laughs> There's a two different this, this brother right here. here yeah, man. yeah. We, two we, different we, hey, listen, we need an APB out here. <laughs> I need Eric Lamont Strickland to come back home. <laughs> if you see him in a 30 mile radius, <laughs> please text the text <laughs> line 424 Because I don't know who this dude is the last two weeks. Oh, He's been on one, and he ain't been on one, he's been on two. And three. It, it was a delay. He is got it, back from his trip. Took him a couple weeks to get back into the swing yes. thing. And, and then now, now we just yeah. now yeah. it was sure, like he, a I delayed response. Away from me. Yeah. We've been I delayed. Turned away from me. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come yeah. On, bro. The prince of that. <laughs> <laughs> is your middle name really Lamont? 
No. Oh, man. that's too bad. Yeah, you, yeah, don't, he looked like a blonde. Yeah, yeah. Sanford and Sons. It's very Stay dark. Shirky, Shirky, pass the, uh, the red as well, please, for later. Please. Oh, I didn't see it. Please. See? see? This is when you Thanks know it's guy. bad. He's trying to hog this, this yeah. sample. All of a sudden, it. he's got alligator arms. Yeah. He went from a 72-inch <laughs> reach to about a 22-inch reach. <laughs> Which one are we going with first? Uh, let's it's go ahead good. and do the koala tears first. It, it's yeah. dark. It's very It's kind of weird color, isn't yeah, it? It's it's, kinda, um, this yeah. is interesting. So it's a sour ale made by Cross Strain, and it's got pineapple, it's got cherries, and it has coconut. Mm. And it's supposed to be kind of like almost like a beer smoothie type of a thing. Mm, I like it. It, <laughs> I like this. Hey. It just always blows my mind when you see a grown man uh, riding a kid's bike. <laughs> hey, you got to get where you got to get. Uh, yeah. By any means necessary. That, that, I suppose. This I suppose. is a patio super pounder. If you drink too many of these, you will be. Oh, yeah. Up in the, but this is a super pounder. This isn't just a regular patio pounder. This is a patio super pounder. What do you get first? Pineapple, coconut, or cherry? I got the pineapple. Yeah. And the pineapple sits. Yeah. The pineapple it sits last. La it it's lasts. Just yeah. just, it's it's, it's more, it's more pineapple. I like this. Mm -hmm. You know what it tastes like? You ever been in an all inclusive in Mexico and you get like the daiquiri <laughs> and it's it's melted but still cold? Mm -hmm. This That's what this tastes yeah, like. Oh, yeah. Good. It's good. It's tasty. Got a little so, sour so straight, taste. Straight, a little yeah. sour taste what happens after you get. You, what happens? What's the definition of the super pounder? What happens? You just out. So you no, just on the porch no, and it's hot and you, you just. Su you super pound. And then you're sitting out back. You got the music playing. You mm. know what I mean? You throw on the on the fire pit, mm. cigar roasting, super pound. And then, you know, you got a honey. <laughs> <laughs> this is I, no, I, I'm saying, I mean, I, no, Kevin, I'm I, saying you, you, I'm you, yeah. you, you, no, not, not, I mean, no, yeah, you, man, you're, dig you that have, hole deeper, you, Shrekky. Keep digging. <laughs> keep digging. Hey, do your thing, man. You excavating yourself over there. You like that green thing over there. You excavating yourself. No, I'm just saying, Bell Reynolds from yeah. the station. No, I'm saying like you know how you put honey on the bread, mm -hmm. and then you yeah you eat yeah. some toasted bread with honey. I got you. Yeah, but this My, thing I'm gonna tell you this good, thing though. right here on a hot day. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Say like after you play golf or something, you get home and just. Nothing to do yeah, out after the round, and you're like, man, I need a cold beer. It's good stuff. What are we working and you with out, percentage? And wise? you're out back. Mm -hmm. You drink about six of these, you oh, done. You done, Yo, you, you done dealing. Yeah, you, you Mahatma. This is, this is Mike Tyson punch out. You glass Joe. Man, <laughs> man. You just out. Yeah. Six percent coming in that oh, smooth. Not, 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 not. No, this smooth no six. Way. It's like it's like kind of no drinking way. a dessert. It's like a tropical dessert. The or, one we or had last week. Drink. The the one we had last week was what a four or five. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. This is a six. This is a six. Wow. Yeah. This that. This that sneak up on you yeah. uh, and hit you with that. You you remember how they used to be in jail? No, I'm not saying we've been, but I'm saying you seen the jail movies mm -hmm. when the person um, walks by you, right, and everything is kind of cool, and all of a sudden you get hit with the hey, 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 and yeah. then and then you you just you walk in and you're like, wait a minute, what? That's how this yeah. pop up on it's you. A shank. It's shanky. You say that's you a shank. shank. <laughs> it, it, it comes shanky. shanky. Like, I've never been shanked before, but I've seen it. Yeah, you it, seen it. it catches you by surprise. Right. You right. four deep. You're like, dang, I'm buzzing. That's what and, I'm saying. And then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. And it tastes so good. <laughs> I feel like this should be like like a pop more than a beer. Yeah, it, it don't taste like a beer. It does not taste it. like a beer, like I said. And I that's mean, the problem. It, well, <laughs> that's also the solution. It depends on you know, you know what, your Kevin? perspective. Well you said. Philosophy. Well <laughs> said. I like that. Well <laughs> said. I like that. I like that. Well said. You said cross train as well? Cross train. Uh, good friends out of um, uh, Papillion, Nebraska, or La Vista, and um, up in Omaha. And boy, that's a tasty beverage. Heck yeah. What's it going well for? Oh, that's a good question. I They're they're not cheap. I want to say, well, we've got them singled out for like five, five seventy five a can. And then, mm. worth, then they're going to be about, uh, yeah, then about 20 bucks a four pack. Yeah, because that's a bigger can than a regular can, percent, right? Though. Kevin, that's a bigger than a regular can. Yeah, that's yeah. 16 ounces. So they come in yeah. 16 ounce four packs. Yeah, that's, that's, good, that's right? good. That's all you need. That's all you yeah, need. Yeah, that's the four you pack. You don't get yeah. more than four. I'm yeah. telling you. Otherwise, you're going to be laid back. Glass Joe. All right. So let's move on to the wine. This is called Lapis Luna, which means uh, stone and moon. And um, it is out of the north coast in California, which includes Napa, Sonoma, and southern Lake Counties. And uh, this one's kind of ethereal, like, Austin and I were joking when I did the Sauvignon Blanc. What was it? Uh, those who do not move uh, do not feel their chains. Yeah. Something like yeah, this. Yeah. Well, this one says you did not come this far to only come this far. So um, I kind of like that too. 
you uh you got to keep on moving and uh um this is a pinot noir so i specifically chose it for stricky because he's a pinot guy uh, <laughs> stricky did you know that there's five members of the pinot noir family oh, i did not yeah p-i-n-o-t p-i-n-o-t but there's pinot noir which you means you know what austin You've been to his class or something? You you've been taking classes with uh every Uncle Thursday, Kevin? four o'clock. Yeah, there's, Boy, there's, there's say it again, with, there's five. There's five. So we've got Pinot Noir, which is what this is. Yeah. And uh there's Pinot Gris, or what they call Pinot Grigio. They make white wine out of a red grape. I knew that. It grows on the vine uh red, but they only make white from it Did generally. Malbec considered that group. Malbec is its own grape it's varietal. Own grape it's variety. not part of the Pinot family. There's Pinot Blanc, which is the, I didn't know that. the only one of the five that grows on the vine white. There's Pinot Moignet, which they make champagne from. It's usually, when you drink a true champagne from the Champagne region in France, it's usually about a third Chardonnay, which is white, a third Pinot Noir, which is red, and a third Pinot Moignet, which is also red. Uh, but again, they don't allow the skins to uh, stay in contact after the crush, a process called what? Maceration. 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 That's my guy right there. And then um, and then the fifth member is called Pinotage, which is a uh, flagship grape in South Africa. And they've hybridized Pinot Noir and another grape called Sinso to create a uh, uh, another member of the Pinot family. So there's there's actually five. Wow! Uh, out of that, learn that today. You learned yeah. something today coming on old school. So and these take a sip. Tell me what you think. Give me the report card. It's a lighter style red. You can see it's it's um um I like this. A, a little more transparent Jay, in color. You sipping today? That's yeah, what we uh, like. Yeah. yeah. Where you been? The uh, and the the reason why Pinot Too shows light. up in the glass a little bit lighter is because it's a thinner skin grape and it's a more delicate wine. But when it's grown in the right places and taken the, the best care of, it actually possesses uh, the highest number of phenols, which are essentially chemical compounds. And so even though they're not as heavy hitting, they are more complex. And um, so th that's what Pinot Noir brings to the table smooth. in general. Very smooth. That's one of the smoothest Pinot yeah, Noir I've ever had. That's, good. that's a good wine right there. I feel like it's it's so what, smooth, what, 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 but it sits heavy enough in the mouth, right? It doesn't just like it's not, it's thin. not like it's thin, yeah. right? You know, it's got <laughs> it's got plenty of flavor, yeah. But uh, it's just a little bit lighter body. So what so, I miss? So nothing. So tell me, Tricky got me. <laughs> so, so so tell me, um, what's this going for? I need to know because I I didn't, I didn't even need to be a Strix pick. These are on the shelf, believe it or not, for thirteen ninety nine. Stop the cat! <laughs> I need three of those right now. Tomorrow, I need those set aside. All Stricky right. Strix pick tomorrow. I'm going to get three of those. All right. Yeah. I'm going to walk right in the door and they're right oh, there waiting for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Don't let them go to waste. Don't let nobody come steal it. All, oh, all none of it's here for decoration, man. If they want to come buy it, they come buy it all. They I better need get there three early. set aside. <laughs> I'm coming for three. All right. You shoot me a text. I'll pull I'll three shoot you a text. All right. I'm coming. If people want to meet Strick, where can they go to meet him? Yeah. At Myers Cork and Bottle at 13th and South Street. There it is. I'm not sure what time he's going to show up, though. Stricky, Stricky's <laughs> going to come early tomorrow, so I'm I'm going to come before the show. We, uh, we're we open at 9 a.m. till uh, 11 p.m. tomorrow. There you go. So See? at some point between 9 and 11, you might get so a chance to meet So before around Stricky. noon, around noon time, Stricky will be there with Strick Pick. What's the name of it again? Lapis Luna. Lapis Luna. Out of North Coast, California. And it means what? Means stone and moon. There it is. And Lapis you did not come this Luna. far to only come this far. Mm, can you stuff. dig it? Can, can it. you dig it? Let's get it. Good stuff, Kevin Meyer. I appreciate you, fellas. Man, we appreciate you, Kevin. Man, you, I'm just, you just turned me around right there that quick, man. That was that was smooth. I was like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. round, round, yeah. baby, right round like a red. Oh. You've been in the club too much. Dude, that's exactly that's where exactly where he's been. A mm -hmm. old I've, club kid over there. Look at him. Imagine when he lays down and tries to fall asleep at night. Like the what's going through his brain? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I take melatonin. Yeah. Okay. I need Mark. sleep. Kevin I, need, I need something a little heavier than that. <laughs> right. Myers Cork and Bottle. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. More old school next. You're listening to Old School with DP and J. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Valley. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. 
That's why as your senator, I helped pass the largest tax cut and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Problem gambling is not just a financial issue. It's an emotional problem with financial consequences. If your loved one is struggling with addiction, contact Choices Treatment Center's 24-hour helpline at 402-476-2300. That's 402-476-2300. At Doan University, we build leaders. And that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours. And our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. Here you go. Coffee's on me and my new BFF. I thought I was your best friend forever. BFF like best financial friend at Members Own Credit Union. Right now, they're offering $100 when you consolidate or transfer a loan or an existing credit card balance and meet requirements. Plus, you get great rates and free advice from a financial partner that will put you first. That sounds like a match made in heaven. Members Own Credit Union is the type of bestie you can count on. Get started today at MembersOwnCU.org slash BFF. Limitations may apply. Equal housing opportunity. Tanner's Bar and Grill is the perfect place to watch your favorite MLB teams this spring and summer, as well as Nebraska baseball. Enjoy Tanner's delicious hamburgers, chicken lips, and daily specials, and wash it down with one of their tons of options of beers. You'll never have an issue finding the game, as there are TVs everywhere throughout the space. So get in early and grab your spot and settle in for an afternoon or evening of baseball at Tanner's Bar and Grill, 30th and Yankee Hill. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Alexa, play 93.7 The Ticket. Okay, playing 93.7 The Ticket. Alexa, turn down the lights. Dimming the lights. Alexa, order a pizza, the big one, all the toppings. Are you sure that's a good idea? Alexa. That's a lot of pizza for just one man. Alexa, just do it. Stop judging me, just do it. As you wish. Thanks, Alexa. You're my best friend. Join us each Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon for Youth Football 101 with Tank Perry of the Nebraska Red Wolves of 7-on-7 Football. The future of the sport depends on the foundation set at a young age. Hear those stories and more each Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon here on 93.7 The Ticket. Back to old school with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Well, we're back. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, old school. Before we get into the uh, paying the bills, we want to give a big shout out to uh, East Strick. Good crossover there, like always, with it. Eric Strickland. Also, a big shout out to Kevin Meyer, Meyer Cork and Bottle, 13th and, and South. Had two great choices, uh, like always. But uh, then also, if you can, get over there probably anywhere from 1130 to 130. If you stay in the area, you might be able to see Strick come in and get his. Uh, Strict pick, uh, great choice at, at that as as uh, as well as we as you've seen on the stream. But we are old school, coming at you live from 10:40 O Street. Uh, the day has gotten brighter, so obviously with that uh, segment of Kevin Meyer Meyer Cork and Bottle, um, and the and uh, following or following the crossover, uh, brought out some light today. We are we are brought to you by the Mercado 
certified Piedmontese special greens at Butcher Shop, 84th and Havelock, 30th and Yankee, Yankee Hill, 168th and Maple up in Omaha. Uh, every type of meat, every type of cut. Go in there and check them out. Um, you know, it was a good conversation there, Austin, that we had with me, you, and Strick, you know, about the transfer portal, um, you know, with basketball. And, you know, football just came open on Tuesday. So, you know, there's some headway with, you know, some guys leaving Colorado and a couple guys jumping in from Nebraska. But I think generally, you know, Nebraska and their staff football-wise has done a really good job of, you know, keeping guys, you know, happy. And then obviously they see the opportunity here. Whereas you think about the the three guys that we mentioned, where they ended up, how they ended up, why they make those decisions. I think in this day and age, in this time, I don't know. I don't think there's a general reason that you can say, okay, this is why kids are going in the portal. Now we're seeing, even when they're in really good situations for them, they still leave. You see guys, okay, we, Michi Johnson, from, mm -hmm. and if you guys don't know him, he's a leading scorer, or at least was last season, for South Carolina, who was a tournament team, number six seed at that. So that means they're, what, a top how many what team? So it's a top 24, 25 Yeah, team? Top, top 24 seed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, the, at worst, the 24 seed. He's the leading scorer, so you know he's going to be able to even maybe even increase that. He jumped in the portal after making the tournament. Now, I don't know if he felt like, okay, I need a better situation to increase my profile or maybe some guys were leaving, but that's a perfect situation where there wasn't any bad blood between coaching. Mm -hmm. You can't say he didn't get opportunity. You didn't. You can't say that you. You know you didn't get, you know, love or a uh, higher profile because you were all SEC in your leading score on a tournament team. You're the first person they talk about when South Carolina takes the court. That's just a small sample of good situation. Now, I don't know about NIL and all that stuff. It just is. I don't think there's a rhyme or reason a lot of times for what guys or gals in this case is go into the portal. That one. I'm curious about because he did start his career at Ohio State, where he transferred right. back to. So, so that's weird. Maybe he always wanted to be, be in Ohio there. State and finally it's coaching change. Right. Or, coaching yeah. change. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, that one, I, like, I, I get it, and I don't at the same time. The one that confuses me is Jeremy Roach. I'm not just saying that as yeah. a Duke fan. A guy that played two years under Shashevsky, played two years under Shire. I thought he was set up to have like a Quinn Cook run, right? Uh, you know, be senior, that yeah. that not not maybe the centerpiece, but be a lead guard yeah. on a, a title caliber team. If Jeremy Roach was going to transfer, I would have thought it would have been three seasons ago when he yeah, had every opportunity, every opportunity, but and he every... waited till now. Yeah. And, and why you, this is your best chance to win a national title in college. I think maybe the 22 team in Krzyzewski's last year was, but you didn't transfer after the guy that recruited you yeah. left. You didn't transfer after last year in a disappointing exit when people would have been fine with it. Right. But you have a lot coming in enough coming back, you can be the go-to guy still offensively as a guard. You've proven you can do it before. Right. So why now enter the transfer portal? Yeah, it's weird because a lot of the guys coming in don't directly play his position. Not at all. You're, you're right. And so Not they're, added, they're actually adding to you because, yeah. um, you know, Flip is gone. Flipowski's go going. Um, you know, McCain's going. So mm -hmm. that's, you, you think that transfers more opportunities to you. You have all you have all the experience, you know, from, mm -hmm. you, you know, just from longevity and, you know, Shire's going to have to lean on you mm -hmm. even more. He's the guy that you're going to have to you're going to have to be the player coach on the court. You're going to get a ton of opportunity, you know, and plus, if you play well, it's it's one of those Duke stories. Yeah. And now you're you're leaving a place where there's more advantages of staying here, even if he kept all his stats the same and the team gets deeper into the tournament it, it, like well, here's what i think what basketball players don't understand and sometimes you see football players they don't understand you're worried about a, a like points per game right so if you go so say you're at duke and let's just say you average 10 points a game and however many assists and all that so if you go somewhere else and average 14 you you haven't really increased your draft status if you're going somewhere to up your profile, you better average close to 20 and you better be adding in, 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 and then in that, you know, like eight to 10 point increase in average per game better be something different from a skill set standpoint that you're this brother, this dude here, 
Listen, uh, no words. No, here he comes back again. Almost hit somebody. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you better add some a different skill set to your in those eight to ten points and mm -hmm. increase in points per game. Because Up if your you, efficiency, right, something. If you go down a level and you average 20, well, then that, they're thinking that's what you're supposed to do. So now you just – and now you're off the, the beaten path. Mm -hmm. Um, because it wasn't like a Monty Ga uh, Monty, uh, Bates, uh, Bates yeah. that, uh, that I said, because he was the number one guy in his class. So people always will kind of track where he goes. Mm -hmm. And it was a big deal when he left Memphis, right? After one year, remember he started or he didn't start, he started, had some success, and then was just, you know, MIA. And then he left the program. Where now it's like, homeboy – you transferred to a place that where you you had it. This is what I don't understand about these kids. Duke isn't a doesn't have to be a big NIL player because it's Duke. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything that you get from Duke is long term connections. Um well short term and long term. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. But I'm just saying <laughs> you finish at Duke. Mm -hmm. You got the connections, you got the um alumni base, you got the ability to be on their staff. They've shown you if you want to coach. They are, they will nurture you, and you will be ready to go be a head coach somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you will get more looks at the next level or multiple levels, whether it's even overseas or whatever, by playing at Duke. Mm -hmm. Because they know if you go through Duke, what type of player you are. And you can go overseas and expand your game. Mm -hmm. You can add to your game over there because it's a different type of basketball and then be able to come back. I don't understand why you would leave Duke. Um, because it wasn't like you were ever in bad standings because you were a surefire starter this year and you would have been next year. He absolutely would have been. Do you think there's any element of just like social contagion to it where something gets hot and guys or players don't know why they're doing something, but everyone else is. So they yeah. feel like they want to get caught yeah, they, up in they, the they, trend to some degree. Yeah. It thinks like that's what it like. Okay. Well, this is, I'm going to see, I've been here four years. I, let me go do something else. Yeah. Let me go just do something. That, I mean, you see it. You saw it sometimes with some kids that left Nebraska. Now, some of them have su success at other places, but some of them have uh, have been off the beaten path. Like, you know, um, you know, Casey Rogers was here, was going to start, decided mm -hmm. to transfer. Now, it worked out for him because he went to Oregon, and they are obviously, you know, a, a bigger program as far as, like, uh, getting the bowl games and all the other stuff. But did it really increase his value or presence to go to the NFL? I would argue with you. To say it didn't because the guy that everybody thinks of that's going to possibly be um, in the first round is the other defensive tackle mm -hmm. based on what I saw at the combine. So I would say you probably got practice film of Jackson Powers Johnson handing you your right, butt. right. But but yes, you went against him and it, and he's going first round and it was great. We got to meet him at the Remington Award, a, a phenomenal young man, by the way, mm -hmm. but. The thing is, if you got the same amount of reps or more reps at Nebraska and you made more plays, and just by chance you were one of the big pieces that got Nebraska to the bowl game, I'd be willing to bet that you would have went to the combine and you probably would have got a better chance of getting drafted mm -hmm. and still been the same player. Right. So those are the things I think that you know kids miss the point on. But also I think that these kids these days, majority of them, not all of them, aren't thinking I'm going to go a place and stay because they don't have to. They haven't had to even in their clubs. Like, you know, we talk about club basketball all the time and these different, you know, you know, organizations that these guys, uh, you know, play with, you know, like Mikey Williams, you remember him? Mm -hmm. Obviously he, he ran into some legal troubles, but he, you know, he played for the Compton magic one time. Then he played for another school or another, you know, AU program. Then he was in school in California. Then he was all the way down in Lake Norman in, in North Carolina. So, so these guys going and doing, you know, different things in a short amount of time, year to year basis. I think that's just, you know, what in their DNA. I wonder if there's too some almost fear of commitment, like anxiety over making a big choice, right? That they want yeah. consequence free decisions. Yeah, that's exactly you what know, they want. and that's not how life works. Sometimes you make a decision, and obviously, when they commit to a school and decommit from a school, there are consequences, right? They'll mm -hmm. feel them. But the consequences of being at a place for one year are not the same as the consequences of being at a place for two, three, four years. They like to give you a little bit and then you leave a lot. Yeah. And leave a lot to be, you know, had or thought mm -hmm. about. Um, they don't they want to make every decision without any I call it ramification. Yeah. And everything they do is conditional. I'll work harder. And this is just majority. This is not all of them. 
not talking about anybody specific, but just talking just flat, just general, is that they'll work hard based on the condition. Yep. They'll come play for you based on conditions. And all the conditions are one-sided. How much am I, how much am I guaranteed you're going to play? Do I got to compete for it, which they don't want to, generally don't want to do? And will you tell me everything that I want to hear? And then some, regardless of, of if I, you know, follow a script or a game plan or whatever. And that's generally, that's the majority. Now, where you have the minority are is guys that want to go someplace and they're truly going to be invested and they're going to give 100% effort and they only leave because somebody didn't either live up to their word, they've had bad circumstances where you catch the injury bug, you think about Ramel Lloyd or something like mm-hmm. that, or they, you know, are, you know, so down on the depth chart or get beat out that they just want to play. That's the minority. Uh, right I, also, I also think a, a group of that last, or subset of that last group you mentioned are guys that are confident and secure in who they are that know what they want to get out of it. Because I think the guys that, you know, would, would like to play snaps, but know they're probably a career backup are just going to yeah. stay, right? It's not the end of the world if I don't play. You know, I'm here for my education. I, I like the benefits I'm getting as a down scholarship guy right. or maybe a little NIL sprinkled here and there. Mm-hmm. Or the ones that know they're superstars. Like, yeah, I mean, I could go out and get recruited. But also, I know I'm good enough to get drafted where I want here. So what's the point of putting myself through it? I think the ones that are, are more like confident in themselves, yeah. maybe sometimes. And probably dealt with and, some and adversity. They are, yeah. adversity. Yeah. I think a lot of times these kids, you know, they their idea of, you know, dealing with adversity is being held accountable. That's their idea. That's their idea. Like essentially doing what you're told. And right. then if you don't, then you're held accountable. That's their idea of adversity. You get what I'm saying? Um, and then their other idea of adversity is if is actually competing for a spot or that's not adversity. That. It's not a, that's not, not you know, close. but so the guys that actually welcome adversity, welcome competition, understand, oh, maybe I didn't perform it well, or maybe there's other guys that are just as good as me. I got to really, you know, raise up my level. I got to be more consistent and then everything will work itself out. And then, you know, then I got to just beat you out over time. Those are the guys that you see that end up on the all conference list. Those are the guys that you see that will potentially, you know, be in, getting drafted, will be at the combine, so forth and so on, or in the NBA, you know, uh, you know, pre work or pre, you know, pre draft camps and all that stuff. Those guys generally make it because mm-hmm. if you, th- this is what I think sometimes gets like lost in in the wash. If you come, if you come to, if you go to any university, right, in this day and age you're going to have to compete for your spot. So you talk about Jamarcus Lawrence potentially going to Rhode Island. And and I'd look at Rhode Island kind of like when people ask Deion Sanders about Jackson State versus versus Power 5. He said, listen, skill position-wise, there's no difference. Maybe the depth, and so say you might be too deep at Jackson State, you have three or four guys at a position, skill Mm position-wise, at a major university. But when you play in the game, your top guys are playing. So it really is not a lot of difference. The difference is in the linemen, right? So when you think about going from Nebraska to Rhode Island, one, two, and probably three, there's not a lot of difference. Because even though athletically a guy in Nebraska or a school like Nebraska might be better athletically, that guy up there at Rhode Island or a school like that plays that three better than you, like Drake, like DeFries with Drake or um, my man from Indiana State that wears the goggles and stuff. He's like the, you know, they call him like a little mini uh, or a, a mini Larry Bird. They will give you they will give you problems in a different way. Now the bigs are different because most bigs are going to be at the power five low. That's the, that's the main thing, and I think a lot of these kids just lose the idea of how you became what you're really playing for, and that's why you have to wonder: Do you are you really invested? In football, are you really willing to sacrifice something? Are you really willing to beat somebody out in spring, not do what you really like to do? And a lot of kids won't. They want to do it a little bit, and then they want a lot of credit, and that's not the way it works. I think it's closer to adversity when, say, Buffalo drafts another linebacker or Buffalo brings in a free agency linebacker. Yeah. But even that is, it's just business, right? It's not right. really adversity. Yeah, that level, it's adversity yeah, that, if the coach doesn't play you and you're doing everything you can and there's right. no reason and he's holding you down because of a grudge. Right. But them drafting someone else or yeah. signing someone else, that's it not sucks. adversity. That's the business. Yeah, it's business and it sucks. And you're mad and all that stuff, but you know you got to compete for your spot. Right. But like I said, if I wouldn't have gone through, in my mind, 
or wh whatever, whether you want to lay a adversity or competition early in my career after having success, you know, mm -hmm. where you kind of come in, you know, you're just throwing it at linebacker position. You're competing for a spot. You're barely getting reps. You compete. You win the competition. You start. You're, you start, you, you know, you're playing 60% of the time. And then next thing you know, you got to switch position and start all over again. So the, that allowed me to deal with on the day-to-day, -day, week to week, or year to year, whatever you want to call it, competition at business level. You start to welcome it because you, then you start to say, you know what, as long as it comes down, as long as it's an even fight, I know I'm going to win every time because I'm more willing and able to go longer and harder and really, you know, lock in and try to win this position. And so if you take that approach, in basketball, in this case, in the transfer portal, wherever you end up, where you're staying here, or in the spring ball, uh, what they're got going on right now, and going on all across, you know, college football, you'll be successful. It'll work itself out, man. I mean, it's and it's tough because a lot of these kids haven't had to compete for a spot. Mm -hmm. They've always been the biggest, fastest, strongest, or the best athlete on every team, or found a team that gave them the spot. Exactly, and then they, you know, in order to get to places like Nebraska. Or, you know, anywhere at, you know, play, at, at any level playing college sports, you've had to do a lot right, a lot more right than wrong. Where people lose sight of things, they either keep going back to where they were ranked at coming out of high school. They keep going back to like when they made a play or had a good game and they never deal with in the present because if you deal with the present, you will face adversity head on because that's no different than facing an opponent. Right. And a lot of times the hardest opponent that you face is yourself mm. because that's the person that you can't lie to. That's the person you can't trick. Um, well, actually, you can lie to yourself, but you can't trick it, trick yourself. And you can lie and trick yourself into thinking that you're doing something that you're actually not. And when you do come to reality or find some sort of focus, it's, it may be you're, you know, a day late and a dollar short. So anyways, good first segment. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, old school. We're going to take a quick break. Come back. Uh, quick, real quick, real quick segment. Then at the top of the hour, uh, we got we got Grayson coming in. He he does a lot of training with high school kids, college kids, and athletes. Uh, it'd be good to dig into his mind because it's a little bit about what we just talked about and how he helps them both on and off the field or court or whatever sport they're playing. Jay Foreman, Austin Norman. We'll be right back. Watch Old School live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havilah. This week's special through April 23rd is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, buy one, get one 50% off on Montova grilled artichokes. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Buckle up and hang on. This is going to be a good one. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes oh, and family-friendly facilities. Trading paint. We've got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts. Beer and barbecue oh it'll for sure be a good time and you are all invited nascar weekend at kansas speedway may 4th and 5th get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com the omaha supernovas are back in action this saturday april 20th versus the san diego mojo at chi health center in omaha the Mullen motors pregame show with Derek pearson and renee saunders starts at 5 p.m with first serve at 6. Make sure to tune in to the next Ag Appraisal Realty postgame show right after the match ends. Catch all the action on your flagship station, 93.7 The Ticket, and statewide on the Supernovas Radio Network. Spring often marks the beginning of severe weather, which can lead to power outages. LES wants you to be prepared before the storm. Restock your emergency kit. Update your info with LES, and if you encounter an outage, report it at les.com slash report. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. The Double the Savings Sales event is happening now through April 22nd at Bonds All Pool and Spa. During this event, buyers can take advantage of up to $1,500 in savings and receive 0% APR for 60 months. Visit the Bonds All Pool and Spa showroom at 33rd and Pioneers or visit their website at bondsallpool.com to learn more about their hot tub sale. Act fast because this offer ends soon. Bonds All Pool and Spa, every day made better. 
Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, Garage Doors, and more. 93.7 The Ticket is proud to provide listeners with daily opportunities to win contests and prizes on our airwaves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of a couple rules. All participants must be 21 or older and must wait 30 days after winning a prize before participating in another contest. Once you win, you have 30 days to pick up your prize at the KNTK Studios, 1040 O Street in Lincoln, or your prize will be forfeited. Thank you for participating in our contest, and thank you for listening to 93.7 The Ticket. Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Well, we're back. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman. Quick segment before we get to the 5 o'clock hour. Got my man Grayson coming in. He trains a lot of kids here in Lincoln. Does a lot of good work, um, both on you know in the gym and then obviously in the in the mental brains of these uh, young athletes, young uh, men and women uh, coming up here in Lincoln. But Austin, the playoff and NBA is upon us. What's your what's your been assess- What was your assessment of the Atlanta Hawks last night? I don't know if you got to see, see that game. Trey Young, whatever the the Bulls have done against Trey. He's playing absolutely horrible against them. And I don't get it. The Bulls aren't that good defensively. Great. No, yeah. they're fine. But my prescription for Atlanta is blow it up. Yeah. Blow it up. They have been stuck in neutral really since that. Um, was it Jeff Teague, Kyle Korver, Paul Millsap, yes. uh, Al Horford, Damari yeah. Carroll team? That was the high yeah. water mark for them, like post Dominique. Yeah. Really, they've just been treading water. They're at the bottom of the playoffs, I guess. Um, you had that that four or five series with New York where yeah. Trey Young shushed everyone in the Garden, but they're not getting anywhere. I mean, yeah. they traded John Collins away, and that didn't do anything for him. Capella's fine, but doesn't move the needle. Okongwu has been banged up. Trey hasn't become a superstar. Um, the Dejounte thing is just weird. Yeah, it's weird that you got the same player. And traded for the same player. I think DeJounte Murray is actually taking over. You know, they were talking mm-hmm. about sending him to the Lakers, yeah. which would probably been a great fit. But it'll be interesting to see if they move Trey Young and try to bring a spark from there because they do have a good roster. Mm-hmm. They've been the classic underachievers. Yeah. They played Chicago, who played, was shot it really well, well for who's Chicago. The, who's the coach they let go before uh, they brought Snyder in? Uh, it was Bullheiser that went to Mich- or to? No, he Bucks. went to the Bucks, but there was a guy between them. What was his? Was it Nate McMillan? Yeah, Nate McMillan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and he was he was actually really he good. Was fine. And he was yeah. almost like he was coaching him too good, <laughs> right? Told, holding him accountable again, right. that accountability thing. Jalen um, Johnson looks like a dude, though. Yes, but you have good pieces. You're gonna have to make a decision between Trey Young and Murray. Yeah, Trey who do Young. You, who do you choose? I think right now you can get more from Murray. I think so too. So Trey Young is your guy. I think Trey Young has always played better with without a equivalent to him. As far and plus they're they're you know they take the air out of the ball. They need yeah. the both of them need the ball. I think you get more for Murray. I think you could find a a better complement for Trey Young or complementary pieces for Trey Young mm-hmm. and may be able to make a push in the East because I think after this year if Boston doesn't win it and Philly has shown. They have chinks in the armor. I think there's an opportunity for the Atlanta Hawks to really make some noise and move up if they handle their business this offseason. It was disappointing to see them play because I think they I think they have a better roster than Chicago. They just mm-hmm. played garbage. And they didn't look at I mean, Trey Young, some of the passes he was throwing, mm-hmm. behind the back passes, throwing it to a, a player on a kickout. That's not even close to being on the wing. Um was was very interesting because I've never seen him play that way. You got to think he made the all-star uh, all-star uh, game and he led the uh, East in, in assists. Mm-hmm. And how do you, how do you have six turnovers as a perennial 
you know, for your second or third team all NBA in the first half. Well, it doesn't make sense. Steph got away with some of those behind the back passes, but then they bit him against the Caps. Yes. Right in the, the series that they lost. The one that's weird to me, though, is DeJounte Murray becoming so ball dominant. Like, yeah. you always knew there's another gear to him in San Antonio, but the fact he's taken over as much as he has offensively really surprises me because what I thought the Hawks would have done would be to get DeJounte enough shots to keep him happy, but not let him be 1B. Yeah. What they needed to do, in my opinion, was if, if Trey's your guy that you draft and you want to build around, he is the engine. He is the focal point. Yeah. He gets the touches. He gets the shots. DeJounte, you know, can run the point when Trey sits or whatever, but he needs to cover for Trey defensively. Then get a wing in there. And then I, I liked Collins, but I can understand why he didn't fit since he's sure. better at the four than the five. Right. But then Capella needs to take a step forward. Right. Kongwu needs to stop being banged up because they don't have a difference maker inside to pair with for a true lob threat all yeah. the time. Yeah, and it, and it's weird because Murray has just came like from the first game. It was like, hey, I got I got hey, I'm not I don't have Popovich, you know, pulling the strings back <laughs> on me. I'm getting my shots. I'm in. here. Yeah, so it's it's interesting. And so uh anyways, I just wanted your thoughts on that. I was gonna text text you last night, but uh got your opinion today. We're gonna take a quick break and at the top of the hour we got my man knocking at the door, chomping at the bit. Grayson uh trainer sports trainer here in lincoln does a really good job does a not really good job does a great job of improving athletes so if you're listening you have any uh young kids of your own uh of all ages uh high school athletes college athletes definitely uh send them over there because he does good work but we're gonna take a quick break austin norman jay jay foreman old school we'll be right back you're listening to old school with dp and jay Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth. 93.7 The Ticket. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Bally. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why, as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. Do you need motivation to get to the gym on the weekend or even in general? Tune into the Movement Hour each Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Movement Academy owner Robert Kuhlman will host the show as he introduces new ways to stay in shape. The Movement Hour every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. At Doan University, we build leaders. And that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours. And our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The Electrical Workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today, we'll see a chance of showers this morning and partly sunny skies this afternoon. It will be breezy too with the high around 58. Tonight we'll see increasing clouds and a low around 35. And tomorrow mainly cloudy skies expected with an afternoon high around 59. I'm meteorologist Kyle Fletcher for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. You don't think about your roof very often, but you should never take it for granted. Roofing Service Company takes every measure to provide you with the highest quality roofing solution. Whether it's a new roof installation, roof repair, or a re-roofing project, their overall goal is to provide you with a pleasant experience and a long-lasting roof. If you have a need for siding or gutters, they're your place to. Visit RoofingServiceCompany.com for more info today. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? 
The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402-466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Iron High Construction is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron High Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and a rector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron High Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com, where they're committed to you every step of the way. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, this is Old School. Sponsored by the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese. Broadcasting veteran Derek Pearson. When you find something that moves them, that makes them smile, celebrate it. That's your task. That's your superpower. Nebraska Football Hall of Famer Jay Foreman. Life was a pass. It was tipped. It's picked off by Foreman. He's at the 15. 10, 5. He'll score. On 937 The Ticket and the Ticketfm.com. What up, Jay Foreman, Austin Norman? Old school. We're brought to you by the Mercado Certified PMT, Special Grids and Butcher Shop, 84th and Havelock, 30th and Yankee Hill, 168th and Maple up there in the O, what they call the Metro. That's Omaha, for if you don't know the uh, nickname for it. But I'm always excited when we have special guests in and also special people in. I want to welcome Grayson in and um, give you a little, just a quick little background on Grayson. He does a great job of, I would say, when you train or coach athletes. Um, it just doesn't stop when they leave your facility. Um, and you know, look, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, obviously I heard about you through, uh, Thomas Villianco. Uh, so I was, you know, Thomas, great judge of character and stuff like that. So we want to welcome you, welcome you into old school. Grayson, how you been, man? Good. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Shout out Thomas Villianco and also Jamie Belt. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Bell. Yeah, that's my dude. Man. Yeah, he's actually yeah. in camp right now. He's yeah. training a guy, uh, Jesus Ramos. Got a yeah. fight coming up, uh, I think the same week or weekend of uh, Cinco de Mayo. Right. Yeah. I always want to ask you, like, what got you into, how, d- just take us from the, you know, kind of when you very first started and what got you into training athletes? Because I think everybody has a unique story and how they, you know, came to this point. And then also, I think it tells you your present day story as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we moved around a lot when I was a kid right. and uh, my dad was sick and, you know, I had two choices, you know, I right. can deal with it in, in those two ways and I chose the gym, right. you know, and I needed a place to find the confidence to be who I wanted to be. Right. And, you know, I found the gym and I wanted to be able to, you know, provide that, you know, provide that same environment for the youth. Right. Um, you know, and then when I went to University of Nebraska, my undergrad, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I'm like, I want to be a strength coach. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I got to do. I'm going to pay my dues and I'm going to do right. it. Um, and then, 12, you know, almost 11, 12 years later, and you know, here we are. Right. Yeah, that's great, man. I mean, it's always uh, good. The the focus, whether it's through, you know, personal situation, adversity, where it kind of gets you there. But I think the laser like focus is always something that I appreciate because uh, in order to make it, you got to know what you want to do and you got to be willing to fight for it. It's never easy. I want to always want to ask you, man. It's like uh, I know you you do things detailed per athlete per sport. For the people out there that are listening, we got a lot of youth sport parents, um, parents that have you know kids in high school in different sports. You know, when I was coming up, you know, when I when I you know I played basketball, they're like, oh, you ain't supposed to lift weights, yeah. right? That's obviously been put to bed. Mm-hmm. At what age should, in your opinion, and I always respect your opinion, that's why I'm asking. You, should kids start to 
transition into some form of strength training without quote unquote stunning their growth, but too much too fast. You get what I'm saying? Oh yeah. When no, should they sure. start? Yeah. So I have kids that start eight year old, right? Uh, you know, and it's just you know starting off with the basics. You know, um, if we can get them understanding just gym etiquette, you know. Hey, you know, make sure you put your weights back. Hey, right. this is how you squat. This is how you run. Even if it's just an arm form, you know, understanding right. the importance of a warm up routine, cool down routine. I mean, all those things, you know, we can build a really strong foundation. And then I feel like we can build a, you know, a mansion on top of that versus a smaller house. Right. And what people, you mentioned one of the things is form. And, <laughs> you know, I was blessed enough. I, I didn't lift weights in high school. But then when I came to Nebraska, hey, you know, we had Kevin Coleman who went to Olympics. If your form yeah. wasn't good on the squats, it didn't count. So I had to learn yep. by, you know, throw, being thrown in the fire. Yep. Talk about how important form is to the detail of, of good form in any lift or any activity because it can pay off more in the end versus how much weight you can kind of muscle up and throw up. Because I think a lot of kids, I, when I go and work out a little bit by myself, by myself, you see kids in there and they're trying to, you know, they're all about, Oh, I did. Yeah. They want to do the reps or rep, the weight, or, or the weight or whatever. Right. Yeah. And it's, I'm like, Hey, you know, I don't want to be the old guy say, hey, man, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you need to take about a hundred pounds off of there and yeah. do it the right way. But talk about that. Cause I think it's so important, especially for the people or the parents out there, or even the kids that are listening that are starting to either, either are lifting, lifting weights need to hear it from you or thinking about it because that is I think is a huge part of being successful and becoming a better athlete is the form and the getting the right amount of reps. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's one of the most important things we, we uh, probably focus on. Okay. You know, we have kids that we have a kid do something wrong, whether it's in a speed agility drill or in a lift, we'll just stop the whole thing. We'll do it all over again. Right. You know, you know, if, you know, we have parents who are paying us. You right. Know? And so I, I, I might have an athlete for only an hour. So I got to make sure everything's quality over quantity. Um, you know, I'd rather do five perfect reps than 15 bad reps. Um, and I need, you know, I make sure my athletes understand that, which in turn has the parents understand that and all the other coaches we work with, whether it's a club coach or, right. you know, we have, you know, I have college coaches because a lot of my college athletes will come back in the summer and train. And so we're in contact with those college coaches. Right. Saying, hey, this is how we're doing it. And this is why we're doing it. And we, you know, we try to work with them uh, for the benefit of that athlete. Yeah, I think that's great because, you know, sometimes, you know, me and Austin, you know, we're you know, call ourselves basketball coaches, but you know, there's always this thing where for some kids that go out and get outside help, you know, the, the uh, mental anguish that I, I call it, that they face because sometimes like high school coaches aren't helpful, right? They, right. they like, they'll hold, sometimes hold it against them. Mm -hmm. I think talk about the, the being confident. I think it's, I can't speak for you. But I'm just going off my assumption, being confident in yourself to be respectful but then also open to taking a call from a college coach and say, mm -hmm. hey, look, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Say, Jay, this is what our our goals are for him. But I'm turning you over to it. And then you be respectful of it. I think if you respect oh, yeah. the boundaries and then do it with the right intention, it works out. But talk about that because I think it's something that if a lot of high school coaches around here really came to terms with it, it would make their job a lot easier. It, yeah, it would. You know, and, you know, they, and a lot of the coaches, they try their hardest. They really sure, do. Sure, yeah. You know, yeah, and, not, and, yeah. and we're in contact with them all the time. Um, you know, for me personally, I think what's made me most successful as a coach is I don't have any pride when it comes right. to coaching. You know, I'm willing to change whatever we need to or make any modifications we have to for that athlete. Right. You know, if I have athletes, you know, who go and work out in their high school and they still want to come to me, I don't mind changing my stuff. Right. Um, you know, I, I want to do whatever we need to do for the benefit of the athlete. Um, and, you know, my whole career, you know, I mean, I, I was at Nebraska, the San Diego Padres, and University right. of Missouri. You know, I wanted to expand my horizon because, you know, and I'm continuing to do that even 12 years almost into this. So I wanted to ask you, like, uh, when I was going through college and obviously when I was in the pros, they always said that the the clean, you know, hand clean, I didn't really like the full clean. I like mm -hmm. hand clean a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is the most important, you know, uh, movement is that still hold true or what's the what's the number one if you had to say listen i want you to do these two things to help you improve in you know say like majority of your athletic ability what is, is the squat is the clean um yeah see i'm a little different yeah i like heavy sleds right i want i want to push a heavy sled right you know, i want kids because for two reasons one their legs are going to go build up and so when we do that we, they don't, there's not a whole lot of what we call the eccentric action. That's a fancy term basically meaning there, there's not a whole lot of stretch happening in the muscle. Sure. And so we can load that thing up, you know, 10, 11 plates, and they're, they're going to be tired the next day, but not going to be sore. Right. 
uh, and it's going to work on that you know on that knee drive right. and but also when you watch an athlete pushing that heavy weight grant your, right. your son for example you can see they're having to push through so it's kind of building a little bit of mental toughness mental too, tough, yeah you know with them and so you know if i look at an exercise if i can get the most out of you know we call the bang for buck you know if i can get you know i try to look at an exercise and see how much can i get out of this right um, for the benefit of the athlete and uh i think heavy heavy sleds i mean you can back in the day when uh, james harrison was training yeah you watch him push 20 plates on the or 20, yeah, 20 plates on a sled right you know and he, he just pushing through and we all know how good he was so right yeah and he was he was like explosive yeah very um uh, i think a lot of so a lot of a lot of kids don't understand i, I talked to uh, my basketball kids a lot about leverage mm -hmm. and i i view leverage as you know the ability to be sturdy absolutely and and to be like a like a rock or just hard to get knocked knocked off balance and i learned that from coach samuel you mm -hmm. know and once I started to come to terms with leverage and then obviously weight training, then I became a little bit more sturdy. Um, talk about the importance of building a strong base, because I think every sport starts at the ground level. Now, Absolutely. there's there's always an outlier. Talk about the importance of building a strong base that you can start from that can then allow you to reach your potential and exceed a lot of times your potential as an, as an athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what our, our programs are based on, Coach right. Harrison. You know, we have three programs. We have the athlete development group, the athlete performance group, and the athlete elite group. Right. And so that development group is that younger age where we can really set that foundation, that groundwork, and right. understand things. That performance group is more of the high school athlete. They've been doing it for a while, um, but we're starting to really crank things up, make things a little bit more intense. Uh, and then we have our athlete elite group. Those are, you know, college committed athletes, right. college athletes, professional athletes. And so those are the ones that, you know, okay, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm here. I'm ready to get after it. And so, you know, we, we built those programs based on that progression to lay that groundwork because of how important we truly think it is. Yeah, that's great, man. Because, I, I mean, I think sometimes when, just like any gym, you know, say when you first people start going to a gym, you can get a little bit intimidated. So I like it that you break it up in three different groups because if somebody's just getting started, no matter what the age, you need to start them and stair step them versus, you know, say they're a sophomore in high school, never lifted height, you know, mm -hmm. weights, you know, it'd be not advantageous for them to go in there with your elite yeah. group because then they you know you yeah. have a bad experience absolutely um so i think i like it that you curtail it um you know to the athlete in the situation I'll, i'm always interested in, in 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 this thing especially because i coach basketball but then i'll say i played football but then i you know i ran track and all this other stuff what's really the main difference say that between a football workout say like if jay foreman the football player came in or jay foreman the potential basketball or high school basketball player came in what's the what's the major difference you know the way i want everyone to look at it is it's not necessarily sport specific but if you're doing an exercise you just got to ask yourself the question how does this pertain to me as an athlete and the positions i play in my sport right you know and so if we do a split squat and we have a softball player doing that split squat they're going to look at it differently than a basketball forward sure and so we need i want to make sure my athletes understand okay hey we're doing this but you need to continue to ask yourself that question because everything we do is not necessarily specific to us, but it might be for the athlete, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's kind of the educational piece that we want our parents and our athletes to understand. Sure. And another thing I always talk about with my, you know, athletes or basketball player or any athlete is, um, it, which, you know, to be honest with you, you can speak on this as well. Like when I was just leaving college, core, core emphasis was just, infant stages right. if, oh, and that's yeah. being nice yeah i think it really obviously now i think there's obviously science behind it and obviously you know obviously it, you know factual stuff behind it how important it is talk about the importance of the first of all define the core mm -hmm. in your terms mm -hmm. and then talk about how talk about the importance of it because i think that's something that i, I see kids in in the gym they bypass that they're, oh, they're gun show they're going arm curls. They're benching. They're benching. <laughs> yeah. Their lap pull down. Uh -huh. You know, they're doing, you know, concentrated curls. They're trying to get the pump. And they're not worried about core, but they're trying to be athletes. Mm -hmm. Talk about the, what you view as the core and what is the core. And then talk about how important it is. Well, one of my main, you know, I always thought the core is, is as the six pack. And a name you might know is Mike Arthur. Right. Oh, um, I know Mike real well. Uh, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mike's one of my mentors. He's one of the first guys I worked with at Nebraska. I mean, right. he's a genius in the strength and conditioning field for over 50 years. Yeah. When I first asked him that same question, he goes, your core is everything you use from a 360 degree radius. It's your abs, your obliques, your hips, your pelvis, the whole nine yards. And if you're able to control that, the athletes who are able to control that the best, 
uh, and have the most and have the most uh, stability in that, uh, the better of the athlete they're going to be. Right. Because uh, at least they're everything else. At least they're the ability to how they throw or the range of motion they can get in a kick or whatever it may be. And, sure. You know, when he kind of gave me that perspective, it opened up a whole different world for me. Yeah, he did the same thing for me. I always went to him and I wanted to, I always felt like I, I like when I played, I was fast. Absolutely. Right? But then when I ran 40s, I was like, wait, I'm faster than that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, really the the light bulb went on for me is when he didn't call it the core. He was like, listen, we need to strengthen your hip flexors mm-hmm. and we need you to obviously get stronger in your abdominals and all this other stuff. And so he helped literally took time out of the structure time to work on it. And yeah. I dropped my 40 literally from mid four sevens to high four fives. And then I continued to, to beat it. Right. Uh, talk about And I think kids miss the, uh, you know, and I think a lot of adults, cause we do a lot of sitting and stuff. Oh yeah. Talk about the importance of, of hip flexor strength, because what I always tell kids, if you want to get fast, you better be able to get those knees up and be oh, able yeah. to get some power. So, and I think a lot of kids are walking around, not hitting their, their speed and power, mm-hmm. you know, peaks because of hip flexor weakness and not enough flexibility and strength in there. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because we were just talking about that, me and my assistant, the other day. Right. And, you know, that's a big emphasis we're going to have on in our summer training. Right. Uh, you know, you know, all our sessions are an hour, 15, hour and a half. And, you know, we spend that first 30 minutes on just that. And that's one thing we both kind of agreed on. Like this summer, we want to make sure we really get the, uh, the hip flexor stronger in, right. our, in all our athletes. I don't know if it's something we really have uh, specifically, like, focused on, but that's something that we kind of noticed through our training. Like, hey, you know, they're, they're getting faster, they're jumping higher, but what are... What are some of the finer details we need to work on? And the hip flexors are, you know, we're kind of looking into some exercises that we're probably going to implement this summer, right? Uh, to you know, to really have more uh, prioritization of that. Yeah, another thing that Mike told me that would help, and, he, and everything he said came to, you know, fruition. I always say Mike's the godfather of. First <laughs> of all, I mean, he was phenomenal. I mean, you know, he, one thing he always made sure he, as he built me up as an athlete, or I built myself, or you know, whatever. That I kept my flexibility. Mm-hmm. That's something that is huge. Yeah, and uh, I think it helps with recovery. I think it helps with injury prevention. But I also think it, it, it it's one of those hidden things that people, it's not the sexy thing, no. right? Because you don't see, you know, if you go do 100 arm curls, you're going to see a pump. Like mm-hmm. when you get, when you work on flexibility, you only see it internally because it's more of a mental thing. Talk about the importance of being flexible and how it leads to you being a better athlete. And then also all the things I mentioned, recovery injury prevention, uh, longevity for, you know, yeah. in a professional athlete. Talk about that. Cause Tom Brady was, what was it called a plyo? He was more, he, I mean, was, he, was, he was real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, tried to be like Plyometric, Gumby. Like, yeah, you know, exactly, yeah. talk about the importance of flexibility. You know, that's one thing, you know, we have every athlete come in and they perform what we call our introduction session. And that's one of the first things we work on. Like, Hey, like we need to understand, you know, what this warm up routine looks like, what the cool down routine looks like and the expectations of that. Right. Um, and, one of those expectations is, hey, we're doing this because we need you to be more flexible. Right. Um, a lot of the athletes who come to us, you know, like, <laughs> like kind of like you mentioned, they're just benching, they're curling. Yeah. They don't they do not do the quote unquote sexy stuff. They're just, you know, or they are doing the sexy stuff. They're just not doing the things that they need to help lay, lay that groundwork. Right. Um, and stretching is one of those big things, you know. A lot of them, like we have like these little foam rollers. A lot of them don't even know what, the, what it's even called. Right. You know, and I tell them a lot of them, a lot of the athletes who come to us, you know, they want to they be a college athlete. And I'm like, hey, you know, we need to understand why we're using this tool because um, you're going to use it at the college level and some at the pro level, right? Um, you know, or just stretching with a band. A lot of them grab a band. They have no idea how to even grab it. Right. It's just a big old rubber band. Well, Hey, this is a stretching tool as well. Right. Um, we have a lot of other specific stretching tools in our gym, like lacrosse balls that sure. roll out their pecs or their hips or whatever it may be. And, you know, I feel like the more that we can implement that with the athlete, the better because they can take all those small little tools outside with them right they, they can you know they can do it at home before and after practice or whatever it may be sure and for for the people out there that don't know and there's a, i don't really know the the true answer because we stretch before and after practice when is the optimal time because you, you know there's things like oh you want to do an active warm-up and then generally stretch at the end or people say you want to stretch at the beginning and then so forth so so when is the optimal time to stretch uh that's the most beneficial for athletes I think it just depends on the type of stretching you're doing. Right. You know, like before a game, before practice, it needs to be kind of dynamic. Right. You know, I always think slow to fast. Right. So we start out kind of slow and then we work up to the level or the intensity of the activity. Whether right. Whether it's a practice or a game or just a shooting session or whatever right. it may be. And then after that, after the activity, okay, then we go from fast to slow. 
and so i think of it like kind of like a big old scale sure uh, but at the end you know that's when I, when they go home i want them to be able to kind of cool down bring the heart rate down um, and kind of focus on uh you know starting the recovery right and that's what i tell them you know i was like hey you know when you guys when you know when our athletes leave us you know we want them to do the band stretches and the form rolling because we tell them your recovery starts even before you leave us right and uh one thing i, I mean before we go to break then we'll have you back at for one more segment talk about um talk about the recovery mm -hmm. you know talk how talk, i mean because i try to talk to my kids they don't mm -hmm. like they just like yeah whatever i tried to go do whatever talk about how important that is talk about the talk about the difference between an athlete that works at recovery versus the athlete that doesn't you know one thing i think athletes need to work on with recovery is their nutrition right nutrition has got to be one of the biggest things besides sleep you know we feel like nutrition is so big that we added a licensed registered dietitian on our staff okay uh, it's my wife Anne yeah, marie shout sure. out to Anne marie uh you know but she's you know we you know we'll, we'll bring her in to give little talks to the athletes yeah. or we have her do nutritional consultations with our athletes because we feel like it's one of the most important pieces that they need for their recovery right um and again it's a help with longevity sure i'm sure you know as an as a college and professional athlete if your recovery is not on point the next day whether it's a workout or game you ain't gonna be on point right um and so again it's another important detail that we add uh to the to the uh x factor that coach grayson yeah that's so, yeah. great man that's great stuff man a lot of questions a lot of answers a lot of information uh we'll review all of it and i got i'm gonna keep asking questions because uh hopefully my athletes are listening because i i listen i know they them. don't listen to me you better listen to coach <laughs> grayson because if you get coach grayson i can get it get him to work a little harder we're going to take a quick break jay foreman austin orman we got coach grayson sitting in with us old school we'll be right back watch old school live on facebook youtube or twitch old school with dp and j on 93.7 the ticket and the ticket fm.com Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havelock. This week's special through April 23rd is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, buy one, get one 50% off on Montova grilled artichokes. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. For the grandkids, Judson Irrigation has provided lawn sprinkler system design, installation, repair, and service to four generations. They're just like members of the family. Loyalty, trust, service. It's what you deserve and expect from Judson Irrigation. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or JudsonIrrigation.com. Spring often marks the beginning of severe weather, which can lead to power outages. LES wants you to be prepared before the storm. Restock your emergency kit, update your info with LES, and if you encounter an outage, report it at les.com slash report. Take your internet service to new levels with Allo, your award-winning internet provider across our fiber hoods. Allo isn't just about the fastest internet available. It's about connecting you to your world, work, and play seamlessly. Our award-winning service ensures affordable, secure, and reliable connectivity, setting us apart. Ready to transform your internet experience? Experience the fiber difference today. Sign up now at allofiber.com. Allo, connecting your world. Hey there, fellas. It's your girl, Jordan, with Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Women may be complicated, but I make sure buying jewelry isn't. Your gal has a style, and you can figure this out. Is she more of a classic necklace kind of gal, or does she rock the boho chic vibe with layers of delicate bracelets? This is crucial intel. Not trusting your intel? Stop in the store and we'll sort out the details. I promise to make this super easy. Until next time, this is Jordan at Sarder Heyman Jewelry. Happy shopping, guys. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. 
robotics club and space club and stuff like that but what do adults get book clubs and quilting clubs nah forget that how about margarita clubs and old-fashioned clubs get to upside bar and lounge for the best clubs in town try all 10 varieties of upside margaritas or old fashions and take home a free souvenir glass grab the whole crew and pair it with taco night on mondays or whiskey wednesdays upside bar and lounge at 29th and pine lake NEPCO is hiring CDL drivers for Ready Mixed Concrete, Husker Concrete, and Beatrice Concrete. NEPCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEPCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits is your place in North Lincoln to go for all your needs in wine, spirits, and beer. They also have a large variety of cigars in their walk-in humidor, and they have a top-notch walk-in, temperature-controlled, high-end wine room. Plus, you can enjoy free samples from their tasting bar. There's only one place to go for all your needs for spirits and cigars, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits on North 27th Street in Lincoln. Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're back. Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, Old School, sitting in here with us is Coach Grayson. Uh, he does a really good job here in Lincoln. Um, continue to ask you, Grayson, we talked you know, in between segments the importance of hydration. And I want to ask you this because everybody thinks hydration is like what you're doing, drinking water. Talk about hydration is, you know, the right amount of protein, carbohydrate, food intake as well. Talk about that. And then also how when you're hydrated, it can help your performance or hurt your performance. Oh, absolutely. You know, hydration has got to be the key. I mean, our body's made up of 85% water. Right. You know, so if we can get our athletes to understand just that one concept, the better. You know, it's kind of a funny thing we do at the gym. Sometimes athletes will forget their water, but they'll have their cell phone. So we'll tell them, like, hey, you got your cell phone, but you don't have your, but you don't have a water bottle. You know, what's really the priority here? Right. And so they'll they kind of give me that look like, oh, this is a little more serious than what I'm right. used to. And I'm like, yeah, because it, it matters. It's important. Right. Um, so I think if we continue to just reiterate that fact, the better. You know, and we have the hydration charts in the gym and stuff and, uh, you know, like, every almost after every third or fourth set i'm like hey go get water right and sometimes athletes be like oh no i don't need no water it's like, no you need water more than you actually think go get some water right man. yeah you know what i'm saying so, yeah i always i always tell my kids like you're not a camel you don't have any reserves no, <laughs> you don't have any don't. reserves man no. go over there no trust me i can i can run you to get some water we can, we can, <laughs> we can go some up and downs but uh i wanted to ask you about um the like i'm a big mindset type of coach talk about I, I I truly believe a hydrated athlete is the most more mentally focused, more mentally dangerous, um, because I feel like your body and every, it just kind of puts you in a better mindset. Talk about how important that is to be able to a hydrated athlete of being mentally strong, okay. being able to finish, being able to last longer than your opponent, uh, because I think that's crucial. And I don't think a lot of kids um, and parents don't recognize it. You know, we have a lot of our athletes who come in, and especially on not the day like today, but last week we had those hot days. I was able to tell the athletes who were hydrated and the ones that weren't because I told them, I was like, in the, at the very beginning of the workout, I was like, guys, today's going to be a little bit of a harder day. If you're not hydrated, I will find out. You know, a couple, a couple of them were, and, you know, we had to make modifications for those athletes, which is what we're all about. But, you know, at the end, you know, we have to, I have to have that hard discussion with them like, hey, man. This summer in Nebraska, it's, you know, 60% humidity and it's 90, 100 degrees almost every day. You know, we got the gym door open and we don't have AC. <laughs> so right. it's a hot box in there. Right. You know, so I'm like, hey, you know, you got to make sure we're prioritizing this hydration. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think myself, Mel, you know what, maybe we should put an AC in there. Maybe we should put a fan. But then, you know, I don't know if we're, we're going to get the hydration piece out of it. You know? Right. And so I think if the hotter it is in that gym, it gets them there saying, oh, wow, I got to hydrate. Otherwise, I ain't going to feel very good. Right. You know, and so again, if we can continue to reiterate that fact with the athletes, the better. Plus, though, when you're in that hot box per se, 
I think it brings a di- it, it it it's a different type of train. I think it, oh, it's yeah. a different type of mindset. I think it, it, it you're getting it out of the mud per se, and you're in there, mm-hmm. and you and that those are maybe things you can draw back upon yeah. when you're in a game. Um, I want to ask you also, how important is like supplements, and talk about uh, talk about when they should start taking supplements, and what type of supplements do you recommend? um for some of your athletes i know probably it's all curtailed to what they need mm-hmm. but talk how important that is because i think you know whether it's the amino acids a little creatine or whatever i said we you know we did we used it in nebraska mm-hmm. and using it you know with not in excess but the right way talk about how important that is to uh continue along the path of improving as an athlete you know i think uh you know we have athletes start on creatine at 16 17 years old there's a lot you know creatine is one of the most researched supplements out there it's been researched for multiple multiple years you know, even some researchers at Nebraska have worked on it as well. Um, you know, the number one thing I do with supplements is I want to make sure every athlete or every supplement my, that my athletes are taking is the cleanest stuff out there. You know, I don't want them just going to some, you know, some supplement shop and it's, you know, some guy selling some stuff who may not be certified or what he's right. talking about. He's trying to sell a product to these kids. Right. You know, I want to make sure, you know, I tell everybody, make sure your supplement is what we call NSF certified for sport. It's a little label that shows you on there, and they have an app you can download. You, you, you know, you can go to, you can pick a category like creatine or protein or multivitamin or fish oil, or whatever it may be. But I tell everybody, don't buy it on there. Go on like Amazon or somewhere sure. else. Right. Get a yeah, little cheaper. Save, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, save some money. You know, yeah, save some money. Right. But, you know, at Nebraska and, you know, most most colleges and, and uh, professional sports teams, you know, I know when I was with the Padres, you know, that's all we gave our athletes was the NSF certified for sport. So we made sure there was no banned substances because right. the last thing we want is for an athlete to take a, a urine test and they pass it for some banned substance that they had no idea they were taking. Right. You know, I feel like if we can control that, the better. Right. I wanted to ask you, I learned this um, when I went to Buffalo because um, obviously, you know, with Mike Arthur and those guys, we work you know, extremely hard, you know, and it's, you got to hit your marks, heavy squats and all that. You know, when then when I got to Buffalo, it's like, hey, we need you to play on Sunday. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it was, a, it was, we worked hard, but the, ultimately, you know, they don't want you to get quote unquote injured or, you know, be too tight after it. Talk about the difference from when you worked at Nebraska to when you were at the Padres, because I think people don't understand that when you're at a professional level, obviously the, the most important thing is in your case that they're out there on, on the diamond and, uh, you know, and, and performing on, on whatever night you're playing. You know, I think one of the biggest differences was how much I had an athlete. You know, so if we have an athlete in, in Nebraska, you know, we might have that athlete for four or five years. It's a little different now with the portal. Um, but with the Padres, you know, players were getting traded. You yeah. Know, you know, everything's were happening back and forth. You know, some guys would come in for three weeks and get traded. Some guys were there for four years. Uh, you know, and so we had to make sure we had to accommodate for that. Yeah. But at Nebraska, a lot of the times, you know, also depends on, you know, those kids are in class, you know, yeah. they, they got school, they got academics, they got all this stuff going on. So we have to, we have to take that into consideration with their training. But the Padres, you know, that baseball, that was it. Yeah. You know, in the weight room, we had like 12, we had 12 TVs and there was baseball on in every single TV. And so if you didn't eat, sleep, breathe baseball, it really wasn't the environment for you. Right. Uh, you know, but you know, we were working, we, we would play at seven o'clock at night in that Phoenix heat and it's hot. And so we had to make sure that we worked out at a certain time of the day and we had to make sure we knew what we were doing, but it was also specific for each, right. like, you know, like the pitchers are, you know, the pitcher who was starting that night is doing something different than the position players and all that. And, you know, we had to kind of make our own little bit of uh, accommodations for uh, Nebraska with each sport team as well. And, right. You know, shout out to all my mentors out there, like Mike Arthur, Brian Kamita, Rusty Ruffcorn, a lot of those guys. Uh, Coach Tim Wilson, you know, a lot of those guys kind of helped me show that because they were the strength coaches for all these different teams. Right. And they were, you know, they were a good group of guys. And they were kind of teaching me, you know, hey, you know, this athlete might need this, but this sport may need that. So, yeah. Have you, I wanted to ask you about all your mentors and all the head coaches, uh, strength coaches that you had before you obviously went off on your own. Have you, did you take a little bit or a lot of it from each, you know, coach oh, or yeah. each program, each sport? Oh, yeah. And then that's how you're able to, curtail it and use it for athletes that come through your door oh yeah absolutely you know i mean my first internship was at florida atlantic university sure so i was there i came back up to nebraska and i was there for almost four and a half years as right. an undergrad uh, and then that time that's when i went down to the university of missouri one of my mentors down there was a master strength coach named dr pat ivy uh you know coach ivy he's been around for a very long time he's at the university of louisville right now um, and when i was at missouri we had the opportunity to actually uh, him and coach Kaz Kazadi. 
Cause or Coach Cause is actually he's the TCU football strength coach right now. Oh yeah, 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 he's, yeah. He's coach great. Cause, good, yeah. yeah, good guy. And so we did like an inter uh, like an internship exchange for like a whole week. So they you know they drove us some of us guys down from Columbia, Missouri, down there to Waco, and he was at Baylor. Right. And I'll never forget it because we were there and they had a lot of pro guys come up and we were out there in the football field. And it was like 115, 120 guys doing yoga, and I'll never forget it. RG three walks in. I'm like. That's RG3. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. there, you know, like a little yeah, starstruck. Well, yeah, he moves a little different. Little, yeah, yeah, he does a little starstruck. You know, I think he pulled him in like a McLaren or something. Yeah. And I was like, this is a little bit of a different thing. So that was cool kind of seeing, you know, seeing that. Um, because, you know, again, you know, I'm 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 trying to I'm, I'm trying to add different tools to my toolbox. Right. Um, and then when I came back up to Nebraska and then the Padres, obviously I learned a lot from that experience as well. Um, and so I try to, you know, I try to continually take all these things and you know, Jamie Belt's a big part of yeah. that too. You know, Jamie's shown me things that I I thought I knew, but I didn't. You know, and, and so shout out to shout out to Jamie. He's helped me out, mentored me a lot as well. Right. Um, and so again, I'm just trying to continually add people um, in my corner who are good people, right? Um, and that are going to help me grow as a coach and a person. So, I want to ask you that one more thing before we let you go is that the importance of conditioning. Mm-hmm. I always feel like if you can, you know, I mean, I'll say with basketball, I feel like if you're going to develop skill or you're going to try to get you know uh, better in the weight room. You got to be in condition because mm-hmm. if you don't, if you can't continually do the reps at it for a longer period of time you won't develop the skills kind of like a, a perfect marriage talk about the importance of conditioning and how it, how it you know can bring positive results not only in the weight room but then also in the skill set because if you're not in condition now i know you have to work up to it mm-hmm. but it also takes work outside of practice in you to continue to improve your conditioning oh, absolutely you know that's one thing you're really focused on last year jay in summer training and i think we're going to focus on it again this, in this summer we're going to start that probably around the first week of June right. when we start our first groups in that. And, uh, you know, we focus probably another 15, 20 minutes on that. Um, and I tell my athletes, hey, we're going to warm up. We're going to do some speed and agility. We're going to do our lifting for that day. And then at the end, we're going to condition because, you know, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of football players in there, a lot of volleyball players, a lot of softball players in there. And when they start that, that fall sport in August, you know, they got to be ready. Right. If they're not, they're going to get passed up. Um, and we make sure they understand this. Like, hey, you know, we're going to do things a little differently here to help put you, uh, to help those athletes be in the best positions possible to be successful. I want to ask you, uh, for all our people out there, tell us what, you know, where we can find you. Obviously, mm-hmm. we'll, we're going to obviously post you on uh, all our social media, where they can find you when your next session starts, or can they join mid session, or do you just kind of work with them individually and then transition them in there? And then also talk about uh, your hours or operation because I mm-hmm. think obviously people want to know. Obviously on weekends and starting to get more breaks and mm-hmm. heck, just in a month I think kids are going to be out of school, which is crazy. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming so fast, <laughs> no. man. I just keep, just think like it was New Year's it. the other day. That's right? what yeah. I thought. It's just coming so fast. And so no, uh, so we do th- we do stuff year round. Right. You know, during the school year we try to do stuff at night to accommodate because the kids are in school obviously and they have practice after. Sure. Uh, but, but yeah, this summer is going to be fun. Uh, so uh, we're going to be having a pre-summer uh, performance testing event. We're going to have a couple of college, maybe professional athletes there to help sign autographs and help out with it. Uh, and this summer, we're going to be training, you know, all day. You know, we'll be in the gym Monday through Thursday. And we usually take the weekends off because kids, sure. kids are traveling, traveling for, yeah. for sports or they got vacations and stuff. And, you know, we got a couple of exciting things. We're actually going to be working on or working with Malcolm High School. Where sure. we'll, be, we'll be running all their uh, summer strength conditioning stuff with their coaching staffs out there, uh, as long as all the stuff at the gym. And then our boy, uh, Thomas Filianco, and I, we're going to be uh, running a couple – Kind of cool camps as yeah. well this summer too. Yeah. So no, it's going to be a really busy summer. Um, people can find out more information at www.coachgrayson.com. Um, there's a contact thing on there. They can contact us. But you know, we we, we would take pride in every opportunity right. to help athletes out there. And tells everybody where you're located at. Uh, you know, here I think you know where you're off the old Cheney, right? Yeah. So yeah. we're out there on old Cheney, 49th and old Cheney. What's funny is like you you drive by. You know, there's so many people that drive by that building and there's no sign. Right, and I got people who will call me. You know, like if they've never been to the gym, they'll call me. They'd be like, you know, I can't find it. I'm like, good. I don't want anybody finding yeah. it. Yeah, because you know, like with Jane, when Jamie's there, we'll have you know world champion boxers yeah. in there. We'll have professional athletes in there, and they don't want to be bothered. Right. You know, we've had that in the past where you know people come in, ask for an autograph or whatever in the middle of a workout. You know, so we like to be a little bit more exclusive when we do things, but we promise when people walk in, like, we're going to give them the wow factor. Right. But yeah, when you drive by there, it. It don't look great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I like it you though, know, man, because it, it was a little hard, you, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah, you're gonna see the athletes out there trying to get a break because uh-huh. they they work it, man. I, I like it, man. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's uh, you know. Remember, I don't know if when you were at uh, UNL, they had the pit, mm-hmm. 
And uh, that's where the offense and defensive line went. And we were just talking to some former teammates. It was kind of like their own meeting spot. A lot of a lot of wars were 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 battled down there, but mm-hmm. nobody knew the results. Mm-hmm. But they they forged steel down there, and that's what I think you you're doing at your spot, just because I see the improvement of all the athletes. And then also, lastly, we were talking about before we even got on air. Talk about how uh, proud you are that Jazz Shelley got drafted. You've been working with her. Mm-hmm. Talk about that process because I would say, like, even though you technically are training them, you're still coaching them. Mm-hmm. So talk about how that made you feel and how happy you are for her because she's been a great asset oh, yeah. at the University of Nebraska for, for for some years. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm so proud of her. You know, she's came in. She kind of heard through the grapevine that it's kind of hard that, you know, like we're intense, and like we get after it. And, I, you know, the first couple of workouts, she was so sore. She'd come in. She goes, gee, I'm so sore. You know, I don't want to be super sore when I go to my camps and everyone's like, Jazz, I need you to make sure you trust me. You know, this is all programmed out as a process. So that way, when she shows up to camp, I think she's going to be leaving on Sunday. Right. And down there, the Phoenix Mercury. Um, and I think her first workouts are going to be on Tuesday. So right. even this week, where, you know, every single day, we're kind of dialing things a little specific to make sure when she shows up on that first day, she's ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but we've been helping her out with the nutrition, uh, the recovery. Um, she's been doing some yoga stuff as well. And so, you know, again, that's a big piece of the recovery sure. aspect that we kind of implement for our professional athletes you know we want to make sure that we can provide more resources for them to be successful but yeah i know jazz is she's been one of my hardest workers I and mean, she was in there today she's working out with a couple of football players a couple of other you know male basketball players and you know she, she'll push them sometimes right um you know because she she has high expectations high standards and that's what we're all about that's awesome man that's good stuff i'm glad you came in Trust me, I, I put the seal of approval for him. He's uh, does a lot of great things. Plus, he's an even better dude. I would say you and Jamie Bell are first class dudes, man. I, I mean, I really you, appreciate, I appreciate you guys that. what you guys are doing. Uh, make our jobs a lot easier. But then also, I think what you guys do for kids off the court field or whatever uh, is just as important because uh, you know every single one of them, their confidence has grown. Obviously, it's through the work you do with them, but it also takes a little bit of nurturing as well because you aren't just putting them in. Uh, cookie cutter workouts and stuff Absolutely. like that. So I appreciate it. That's Coach Grayson on Old School. We're going to take a quick break, let Grayson get going, and then we're going to put a bow on this uh, Old School segment. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, Coach Grayson. We'll be right back. Thank you. You're listening to Old School with DP and J. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today. We'll see a chance of showers this morning, then partly sunny skies this afternoon. It will be breezy, too, with the high around 58. Tonight, we'll see increasing clouds and a low around 35. And tomorrow, mainly cloudy skies expected with an afternoon high around 59. I'm meteorologist Kyle Bucker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're always keeping their budget in mind. We try to maximize things that are important to them. Bob Benish is the founder and president of Aspen Builders, online at aspenbuildersinc.com. So we really try to maximize the size because five years from now, you can't just make your house bigger. The one thing I can tell you is that most builders in Lincoln, we all are about the same price. The difference comes in the products that we put in and the way we put in those products. The old saying, you get what you pay for, is pretty accurate when you're building a home. If you put nicer windows in and you put nicer cabinets, it's going to cost a little bit more. You know, if those things are important to you, then you want to do it. We can try to incorporate in your floor plan and get a house that you're going to be happy with. Make your dream home a reality and call Aspen Builders at 423-6811. Online at aspenbuildersinc.com. Your home is waiting at Aspen Builders. Cover more acres with a pre-owned sprayer or planter from Landmark Implement, your local John Deere dealer. We offer one of the area's largest selections of used sprayers, applicators, planters, and seeders. Through the month of April, take advantage of fixed rate financing as low as 4.5% for up to 60 months or an eight-month interest waiver. Visit your local Landmark location or view our complete sprayer and seating inventory online at LandmarkImp.com and experience the Landmark difference. One action, no matter how small, can have a world of impact on the life of a child. Cedar started because one couple believed that they could provide a child with a better life. And that belief grew into the cedars that we know today, a powerful force for good 
that helps thousands of kids across Nebraska. Belief grows. For over 15 years, Integrated Life Choices has empowered individuals with disabilities in Lincoln and throughout Nebraska. They provide comprehensive services from group homes and independent living services to job training, ensuring fulfilling lives for those that they serve. Now, they're inviting you to join their mission. If you're passionate about making a difference in the lives of people with developmental disabilities, explore rewarding career opportunities with them. Learn more about their services and apply today at www.ilc.net. Be a part of Integrated Life Choices, where your work truly changes lives. Buckle up and hang on. This is going to be a good one. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes and family-friendly facilities. Trading pains. We got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts. Beer. And barbecue. Oh, it'll for sure be a good time. And you are all invited. NASCAR weekend at Kansas Speedway, May 4th and 5th. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. Join us each Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon for Youth Football 101 with Tank Perry of the Nebraska Red Wolves of 7-on-7 Football. The future of the sport depends on the foundation set at a young age. Hear those stories and more each Saturday from 11 a.m. to noon here on 93.7 The Ticket. Back to old school with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're back, Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, old school. Quick segment here before we turn it over to WTF. Eric Strickland and Cluster Johnson dropping some knowledge uh, back on the airways. They have been before, but uh, I think they're both going to be in studio. But we want to give a big shout-out to Coach Grayson. Uh, does a lot of training and mentoring uh, for athletes all across uh, you know, the city of Lincoln. Has a big influence on him. Does great work, and he's also a great dude. So it's always a joy to have him in there just because he has, uh, as you can tell, a lot of experience and knowledge. And uh, he, he doesn't hesitate in sharing it as well. So he does a lot of great things. And, uh, you know, I was introduced to him through Thomas uh, Villianco, who uh, works with a lot of uh, my basketball kids and with a lot of basketball kids, both in high, high school, uh, well, the younger ages, high school, college, and he has a lot of pro athletes. Uh, and then so he, once he, had, he signed, you know, signed off on Grayson, it's, it was uh, sight unseen and it's been great, man. He's done a lot of good things. I wish a lot more kids would go. Um, because I think they would maximize their potential a lot quicker and faster and then also gain a lot of confidence that way. It's that willingness to share information that I think stands out to me because some coaches, too many coaches, right. probably ones you've never heard of, like to be the smartest guy in the room. Right. Right. Clearly, you know, Grayson's going to be the smartest guy in the room, but he wants to bring you along with him, bring right. you up to his level so that, that you are prepared, that you can take care of yourself outside of his vision, right? Because he's a coach. He's not a babysitter. Right. I mean, you know the difference, yeah. right? There are some kids that, you can coach and there are other kids that you feel like you have to babysit yeah. sometimes. And I know just in my, my brief experience, coaching, coaching is a whole lot more fun than babysitting is. Yeah. You don't ever want to, you know, coach a lot of kids where you feel like you're worn out and you're doing a lot of things that doesn't have to do with coaching. Um, but you also need a team around you, right. In order for mm -hmm. your kids to improve your, your team to improve, you know, they got to do more than just the basics. And the basics is generally just showing up at practice ideally working hard and working on your stuff at practice so to become a better player and then obviously more guys to do it you'll be a better team you know you need they need outside help and um along as long as they all you know all the trainers and coaches all align you generally see a ton of improvement in your athletes and and you know whether it's a you know female basketball player like jazz shelley soccer softball whatever it is you see, once you see the improvement, then their confidence comes. And then next thing you know, you got, you know, a team that you really, you know, wish that you had for. And then it just kind of becomes a staple and it comes a way of life. And so, um, you know, a lot, a lot of good trainers out there. Grayson really, does a phenomenal job. I obviously called, talked about Jamie Belt, who does a really good job of professional athletes and, and high school athletes as well. Um, you know, I always feel like when you're a good trainer or a coach, you have a, you know, vast, um, I guess people you can lean on, learn from, and obviously, uh, you know, Grayson has, has told you, look, he's had some great mentors. Mike Arthur is the guy that, you know, he was great to me, man. He, you know, helped me become a better athlete and work, you know, I had to put in the work, but you know, Mike used to make sure, you know, one of the things I was always wanted to be, you know, flexible as I could, you know, he stretched me before every game. He instilled a lot of confidence in me, man. I, I mean, it's, it's, it, it takes a, 
you know, special person to invest in kids, invest in people. So I think, you know, along with Coach Grayson, Coach Villianco, Jamie Belt, a lot of these guys around the city of Lincoln are all doing great jobs and doing great things. And when you invest, invest in kids and other people, it always comes back on you. And so that's always, I thought it was important to have Coach Grayson in. Um, he's been working guys pretty hard. And, and, you know, we're in the beginning parts of our AAU season, seeing improvement in all my kids that not only play for me, but also kids that I know uh, from, you know, either coaching against them or just have watched them in different ages. They've all done well. So I think there's obviously a correlation there. So I thought it was good for our listeners to listen to them uh learn you know about what he does who he is where they're at and also how if you have a athlete or know somebody as an athlete that wants to improve definitely uh send them over there because grayson will get the best out of them right we talk about so often on this show and 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 on the block as well just about again kind of coaches not being willing to send athletes to their places yeah. and how lincoln is sometimes behind omaha well sure. guess what here's a guy in lincoln yeah. doing really good work who's available who's in an accessible part of town for the most part, like, yeah. it's hard to find, but not hard to find. No, at the same no time, you know, like you'll know where it. it's at. Listen, they're yeah. working every night. Um, you know, and you're 100 percent right. I mean, I think I don't know what the reasons are where where they're against sending them to outside. I call it outside help, whether it's a trainer doing seven on seven mm -hmm. to club basketball. It's not all coaches, but there's some. You know, and, you know, and you know, people know who they are and why they, and they know why they do it. I don't understand it. Um, and I will say this. I mean. Um, Lincoln or Lincoln's a little bit behind Omaha and, uh, mm -hmm. from, and this is how you're, you're able to lessen the gap potentially in the competitive standpoint, you know, you, you think about all the athletes that have went on to play, you know, at different colleges, even at coming down to Nebraska, mm -hmm. a lot of them, majority are from the Metro Omaha there. And then some of them are from maybe outside of Lincoln. And that's because that's all they can do. You know, as far as what we say, you're from Kearney or somewhere like that. You know, one of those places. It's all you can do. You think of like Carter Nelson. He's had to do that. He's been invested. You know, he's been, you know, with Warren Academy and all that. You mm -hmm. think Thomas Fed Fedoni. I think he's from up there in like Lewis Council, Central. Yeah, Council, yeah. Council Bluffs area. He decided to do it. So, you know, it, it's not something that's that's uh, going to be nothing but positive. You, there's plenty of options out there. And if you want your, you know, son or daughter to uh, improve, um, you know, you got to go out there and, and, and find some experts. And also now I think Lincoln, you know, the used to be the excuse that maybe there wasn't options. Now, you know, you got options and we'll continue to bring everybody on if they want to, if they are in that business or in that field of training in any sport, you know, as football, basketball, baseball, whatever in the weight room, we'll bring you on. Cause I want you guys to do the, the best you can, but we want to thank coach Grayson for coming on. We also want to thank, uh, Kevin Meyer coming in for thirsty Thursday, strict holiday. Uh, for coming in and spreading his knowledge. And then now we're going to turn it over to Ticket Week Nights, but first it's going to be 6 to 7, Cluster Johnson, Eric Strickland, WTF. We are signing off for Old School. We'll holler at you tomorrow. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havelock. This week's special through April 23rd is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, buy one, get one 50% off on Montova grilled artichokes. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. What do you think of when you hear the chocolate season? Artisan chocolates? Of course, they have the best chocolates this side of the Atlantic. Friendly neighborhood coffee shop? Yup, they're that too. A nationally recognized top tier brunch spot. Waffle weekends, baby. And the place to grab a gift for literally any occasion? 
Everybody loves chocolate. See for yourself at the Chocolate Season, 40th and Old Genie, or order ahead.